It's a little different schedule this year than it's been uh, from the standpoint of the NCAA moved the rule back so we could report a little earlier and we still have two weeks of summer school here. So we're having to juggle some schedules for the guys and what have you. Uh, with that, Monday through Thursday is when you have class in summer. So for this week, we just concluded. And next week, uh, Tuesday and Thursday, we practice bright and early at 5.30 a.m. feel like I'm going fishing. That's what time you get up to do that, right, Lindo? Um, and uh, the guys, we had two good practices so far. And they were the helmets. Uh, we're getting acclim acclimatization. I think that's how you, the official term of it. Um, and this afternoon here at 3 o'clock, we're going to go and put uh, shoulder pads on so we're in half packs, and that's part of that routine as well to get uh, moving toward full pads, which will then be Sunday. So we'll learn a lot more about our football team today. I tell you what, I like the effort and attitude they've come out with so far. Uh, I know I sound like a broken record when I say that, but this team has been a little bit different in that when it's approached the offseason, when it's approached spring ball, and then the summer. And I was a little, uh, you know, I wanted to sit back and see a little bit there how the first two practices went as far as, uh, you know, how they came back and ready to go uh, from their summer training. Because the coaches, we still had to let those assistant coaches have some time off. So we didn't have our hands on them the complete summer, but certainly for a majority of it we did. But I liked the way they took leadership and went and uh, certainly you could tell the first two practices they did their work that we asked them to do, which was good. So, um, you know, obviously I'm going to get asked the question, who's our quarterback? I don't know yet. <laughs> um, you know, if I knew, I probably wouldn't tell you guys anyways. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, you know, if I knew, I'd probably tell you, so I don't have to answer the question is what it comes down to. Uh, we're in a competition. You know, we obviously have been through this before back in 2014, uh, replacing Lynch. Uh, we had the same situation where we had three candidates that were really in there. And then it took us a little time to figure out who was going to be the guy. Uh, I don't know that it's going to play out that same way, that same scenario this time, guys. We may have a guy that takes control of it in fall camp. It may take us a couple games into the season. It may take us still conference. Uh, I'm not a two-quarterback guy. Uh, I know people say, well, that's not true. You've played a bunch of them the last couple of years. Um, but I'd like to have one. Uh, sometimes football doesn't work out like that. And so we just kind of have to let this team take its form uh, through the work that we have to do every day. And we have to let these quarterbacks take their form on the work that they have to do every day. And that's where I was. That's why I'm down here late, you know, sitting in those meetings, getting a feel for those guys and going forward. So it'll be no um, easy job to replace Drew Hare in my estimation. Uh, I know Drew didn't play much last year and the year before got hurt at the end of the year. But you're talking about a quarterback that has a championship, one of the four in this school's history. So he's one of the four quarterbacks that have a championship. Uh, five, actually, if you include uh, our Hall of Famer, uh, George Bork there. So really, you're talking about a situation where that's a hard guy to replace. And we've been trying to do that on the fly the last couple years. But I tell you, now that you got an off season, and this is kind of the scheduled time we knew we'd have to replace them. Uh, guys are stepping up. There's more teach time. There's more practice time. There's more of those things that can go into finding that quarterback. And I'm excited about that process uh, with that. So, uh, you know, with that, we'll just open it up for questions right now. And then I know we got some other guys back there you guys want to talk to about anything I've missed. So you guys got any questions right now? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, <clears throat> I can handicap it on experience, right? That would be a place to start with. Uh, Santa ended the year last year coming in, leading us to a comeback victory, and then winning his last start. Ryan Graham in 15 kind of was in that same scenario Santa was this last year, um, and then hit some bumps in the road early last year. Um, so I'd say those two experience-wise are probably have it. Marcus Childers then. Uh, I think through the first eight or nine practices of spring ball, maybe wasn't really in the competition, but then the last six to seven really wedged himself in there. Uh, so if you have to handicap it, you probably go off of games played. So Ryan's played the most, Santa's played the second, Marcus has played the least. But I think that handicapping is, is exactly that. I, you know, 
you got you got to go win the job. It's wide open. Yeah, Rodney Hall came in early in January. We were really excited about him and still are. Uh, he's with us and he's doing a fine job. Um, but that transition sometimes can get overrated when a guy comes in early because you jump right from high school to college, man. Your world, your life kind of slows down. But he is got, now he's really adjusted to college life and you're seeing him take strides, at least first two practices here, really nicely. I don't know that he's in the competition though yet. Well, there again, it, yeah, it's only two practices in without pads on. You, you'd have to look at the experience factor. And the situation that we went through last year, I think caused us, well, I don't think, I know caused us to play a lot of different guys. Uh, maybe before they were ready, maybe in some cases not before they were ready. But so the strength coming into this year is that we have a lot of competition going on in a lot of spots because there are incumbent starters that are coming back off injuries. You never lose your job over an injury. Um, so they're coming back as starters, but they got guys behind them that have played a lot of football. So I think the competition that you have, even at an established position like defensive back for our team, you'd sit and say that on paper is a strength. But you look at the competition, that's really the strength because they can't get comfortable. Um, so I think that, that's what I'd say right now is we have just such great competition going all over the board. I'm excited to see how it pans out. Good question.